Dear learners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and today I am going to continue my discussion on biological and culture shaping of mind and behavior part 2. As we all know, in the last program we discussed about structure and functioning of different neurons and different types of neurons. In today's program, we are going to talk about the structure and functions of nervous system as well as we are going to describe the specific areas of the brain and their related control of behavior. Now first of all, we should understand what is a nervous system. The nervous system is made up of billions of neurons. The neurons, as I discussed, make a network of connection. Fine. So it is responsible for receiving, processing and sending of information. All the functions of the body are controlled by the nervous system. It has two parts that is central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So the network which is formed by the neurons is known as the nervous system. Now we are going to discuss that how does this nervous system works and what are the different parts of the nervous system. First of all, let's talk about the central nervous system which is also known as the CNS. The central nervous system which is the CNS consists of the brain and the spinal cord. The spinal cord is the narrow column that starts at the base of the back and extends up through the neck and the base of the skull. We'll get a picture of how it looks like. The brain is surrounded by a protective skull. The CNS which is the central nervous system is responsible for sending nerve impulses and receiving the sensory information. So how does it send nerve impulses and what does those nerve impulses do and how does it receive the sensory information and what is the use of that sensory information. This is all about today's program and we learn about it in greater detail in the further slides. So this is how the central nervous system looks like. So when I said that it is a spinal cord, so it extends from the back and reaches till the back of your skull. This is brain which is surrounded by the skull. The another part of the nervous system is known as peripheral nervous system. First is CNS which is central nervous system, first structure and the another is known as peripheral nervous system also known as PNS. The peripheral nervous system consists of the group of neurons which transmit information between the central nervous system and the rest of the body. It is responsible for carrying nerve impulses to and from the body. That means it carries nerve impulses from outside to the body and takes it from the body. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into two parts. The first part is known as the somatic system and the second part is known as the autonomic system. Let's talk about the somatic system first. The nerves in the somatic system connect the brain and the spinal cord with voluntary muscles of the body. This system senses and acts upon the external world that is it is reacting to the external stimuli. It consists of both the sensory and the motor neurons. Sensory neurons transmit incoming signals to the central nervous system. When I said sensory neurons, that means whatever you can sense through your senses. We have five senses, all of us know. Whatever information those senses receive, the sensory neurons transmit that incoming signal to the central nervous system. These signals originate in the receptor cells. Why receptor cells? Because they have to receive the information from outside. So the information in this is originating in the receptor cells and are located in the sense organs such as eyes and ears. That means these are the sense organs, these receives information from outside and these signals are being sent to the central nervous system. This was all about the receptor neurons. Now let's talk about the motor neurons. Motor neurons whose cell bodies lie inside the spinal cord only. They transmit outgoing signals from the spinal cord. 
the somatic nervous system controls the skeletal muscles that help the movement of the body that is the somatic nervous system is actually controlling the movement of the skeletal muscles of your body or let's know about the another part of the peripheral nervous system which is known as autonomic nervous system the neurons in the autonomic nervous system control the involuntary action in the body such as those performed by your heart your stomach and liver the autonomic nervous system is composed further of two subsystems the first is known as the sympathetic system and the another is known as the parasympathetic system the sympathetic nervous system in the autonomic nervous system dominates in the emergency situation this system controls our emotions it responds by increasing the blood sugar level heart rate and blood pressure and slows the process of digestion that means whenever you are in any kind of emergency situation if you feel that the blood sugar level is rising or your heart rate is rising or your blood pressure is rising always remember that the sympathetic nervous system is at work these changes enable us to cope with the stressful situations in our lives the parasympathetic nervous system dominates the activities in the relaxed situations however the two systems work together in many situations and make adaptation possible let me clear one point to you here that when i said that the sympathetic system is dominating in the emergency situation that is for example your heart rate increases on the contrary i said that the parasympathetic nervous system dominates the activities in the relaxed situation and i also referred to the fight or the flight responses that means when you fight in the emergency situation or when you fly away from the emergency situation what system is at work it is the autonomic nervous system which is at work now what is the central nervous system we have already discussed in this program earlier in the slides that the central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord the neurons in the spinal cord can produce the reflex action also it acts as a relay station relay station means it sends information from sensory neurons in the body to the brain and takes the motor commands back to the muscles that means we obtain certain stimuli from outside and that stimuli is sent to the brain as in the form of information and then brain reacts to that information in the form of sending motor commands back to the muscles that how the muscles should react to that information which it has received from the outside the severe injury to the spinal cord usually results in loss of sensation and paralysis at levels below the point of injury you might have heard certain examples or certain cases from your daily life in which you have heard that if the spinal cord is injured the body gets paralyzed why it happens because the neurons cannot act effectively the spinal cord has two major component first is known as the gray matter and second is known as the white matter so what is the job of the gray matter and white matter which exists inside the spinal cord that is the gray matter found near the center of the spinal cord processes the information that is whatever you receive from outside the gray matter has to process that information that is what needs to be done with that information and the white matter found in the outer layers of the spinal cord which contains the exons transmit information to and from the brain for the muscles to act this is how the brain looks like the brain is the primary part of the central nervous system it is surrounded by the skull for protection the brain weighs on average of 3 pounds that is about 1.4 kilograms comprising about 97% of the entire central nervous system the brain is connected to the upper end of the spinal cord and it has three structures the first structure is known as the cerebrum 
the second is known as the cerebellum and the brain stem leading to the spinal cord. The brain stem is also divided into the medulla oblongata, the midbrain and the pons. These are the structures in the brain stem. Cerebral cortex. The uppermost layer of the brain is called the cerebral cortex. The brain is divided into two halves. One half is known as the left hemisphere and another is known as the right hemisphere. They resemble the halves of a walnut. That is, how does a walnut looks like? It looks like a brain and it has two halves. So, th that is how the brain looks like or the, uh, these two hemispheres look like. It is interesting to note that each hemisphere, that is the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, processes information about the opposite side of the body. Say for example, when you write with your right hand, that is what we usually do, the motor information enabling your right hand to move comes from your left hemisphere. When I say motor information, it is always concerned with what you do with your muscles. So, the motor information that enables your right hand to work, that information is actually controlled by the left hemisphere. So, it stands to here that the information on the right side of the body is controlled by the opposite side of the hemisphere, that is left hemisphere and vice versa. The cortex consists of a thick layer of densely packed neurons. It has large area to be fitted into the skull cavity and therefore it has a large number of turns and twists. When I said turns and twists, let us see what are those turns and twists. So this is the uh, diagram of the brain and you can see there are different turns and twists in the brain. So what are these turns and twists called? The turns and twists that make the structures like hills and valleys that we just saw which are called, they are called the gyri that is uh, in the singular form we say gyrus and the sulci or the in the singular form we say that sulcus. The brain has two basic functions, cognitive functions which is related to how do you learn, memorize or what is your thought process etc. and the regulation of the physiology of your body. There are different lobes of the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is divided basically into the four lobes. The first lobe is known as the frontal lobe, second is the occipital lobe, parietal lobe and last one is the temporal lobe. Various centers in these lobes are responsible for the awareness of the environment and responses to the changes in the environment. The visual information is received by the primary visual cortex which is located in the occipital lobe. That is whatever information which is related to the vision that is processed in the occipital lobe and occipital lobe is one of the lobes of the cerebral cortex. Any damage that happens or disorder whichever is there in the eye, the optic pathway or to the visual cortex results in the visual disorders. That is, if any damage happens to your eye, the optic pathway or the visual cortex results in the visual disorders. That was about the information related to your vision, which is processed in the occipital lobe. Similarly, the auditory information is received by the primary auditory cortex and that primary auditory cortex is located in the temporal lobe, which is again one of the lobe of the cerebral cortex. Any damage of ears, auditory pathways and to the auditory cortex results into hearing problem. The information from body senses is received by the somatosensory cortex that is located in the parietal lobe. So, we talked about the visual information which is processed in the occipital lobe, the auditory information that is processed by the temporal lobe and next is the sensory information that is processed by your somatosensory cortex. 
and which is related in the parietal lobe. The right and left cerebral hemispheres of cortex receive sensory information and control the muscular action of the opposite side of the body. The two hemispheres play crucial role in higher mental functions which includes your language, processing and integration of sensory information, planning, decision making and reasoning. So, in today's lecture, we discussed about the structure of the nervous system which contains the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system as well as today we talked about that how the various structure in the brain are related to each other and what is their function. This was all for today's program. Thank you.